Hello and welcome to the Look Into It podcast. I'm your host, Renee. You guys could be anywhere in these podcast streets, but you're here with me and that's special. I hope that everyone's all right, uh, hustling and motivating throughout the week. I kind of muddled through this week a little bit. I really didn't know what I wanted to talk about this week. Um, I had a little, a mini bout of depression, but that's not unusual for me. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. But um, I was scrolling through social media, as one does, and I came across this video of a young black boy, and he was being forced to drink urine at a sleepover with a bunch of white people. And I was immediately infuriated, and I come up with the topic of the vulnerability of black children in the system of white supremacy. We all know, or at least we should all recognize, that children are our most vulnerable part of the population. And people who harm children, children, whether it be physically, emotionally, sexually, any of that, they have a special place in hell waiting for them. And that is just unexcusable. You can't harm somebody who can't defend themselves. And let's keep it even more honest. A lot of times children are taught that they can't defend themselves against adults because it's disrespectful to defend yourself from disrespect from somebody who's supposed to be an elder when they're really just an old fucking nigga. But that's a story for another day. All right, now let's look into it from the point of antiquity. We're all familiar with gator bait, and for those of us who aren't, gator bait was a term used to describe African enslaved children, what they would do, they would take uh, infants and toddlers away from their mother and they would put them in cages and put them on the shores of, uh, you know, lakes, ponds, and swamps. This happened a lot, particularly in Florida, South Carolina, and Louisiana. And when those babies were on the swamps, they would be crying and, you know, sometimes they would have them partially in the water. And they would be kicking, crying, and screaming, and that would agitate the water. And gators would come up, and they would eat those children. But when the gators came up, the white supremacists would oftentimes shoot them or, you know, stab them to death or whatever. However, they killed the gator, and they would use the gator hide for fashion, and they would, you know, eat the meat of the gator. And that's why they call African enslaved children gator bait. The term became so popular, especially down there in Florida, that... The white supremacists began to make postcards with little African babies in cages saying, uh, hey, from the gator bait state. And it was actually a a controversy, I want to say last year with the University of Florida, where um, at the football games, they would they would chant gator bait. And, you know, a lot of the black students got were offended by that and they caused a stop for it. And, you know, white people being white people, they had to protest it. Because, you know, anything that has ever negatively affected black people, we deserve it in their eyes. So that's just how they work. But let's take this thing. uh, Excuse me, guys. That was my dog coughing in the background. Let's take this thing to Louisiana and understand this. The infants that were born on these plantations in Louisiana weren't only subjected to racism, they were oftentimes used as, uh, in magic ceremonies or voodoo ceremonies because the missus of the plantation would kill them and take their blood and use it in her makeup and, you know, her beauty regimen. They had a really big thing for killing male infants and taking their blood. They viewed female infants as the comp- as their competition in particular. So they would take the blood from male infants and they would drink it they would rub it on their faces they would do all types of stuff that they believed would keep their skin young looking and so their husbands would stay out of the slave quarters at night one of the most popular and i hate to use that word in this context but one of the most popular things that they would do was they would have a a bloodbath and that was when the missus in the plantation would lay in the tub and she would have a, a brand new infant uh, slip, slip the baby from its 
neck all the way down its sternum past its stomach and everything and let the blood fall into the tub and she would bathe in it now if that isn't demonic i don't know what is believe it or not they actually touched on uh these type of rituals that were happening on these french plantations in american horror story season three coven uh madame delphine lalari took the blood of a of an infant slave child that her husband had sired and she rubbed it all over her face as a beauty regimen like this stuff isn't cap i'm telling you guys the raw truth of this stuff you guys can do with the information what you will and speaking on uh delphine lalari she was so damn racist at the time that she got ran out of new orleans for being too damn racist how the fuck do you get run out of a racist ass city and state for being too damn racist this woman was so disgusting her slaves were just treated i can't even think of a word for it and you can look this up this is the god's honest truth she did the first sex change operation in american soil she took a male slave and a female slave and she swapped their genders i'm not bullshitting you you can look it up. Let me tell you guys how she got caught. She had a, a house fire. She had a slave chained up in the kitchen. It was an old black lady. And she said, I am tired of this bitch. And I am tired of this shit. And, you know, back in the day, they had those open fire, like, underneath the stoves. And the old lady, she reached up onto the table when she grabbed a napkin. And she put it underneath the fire and she started a fire in the kitchen and you know back then there weren't really like fire departments you could call and stuff like that so the all the neighbors they came you know with water and they started to you know try to put the fire out and delphine was like no nah, no nah, let it burn let it burn let that shit burn i can just build up another one and they were like no no you got some good structure here we can you know we can save this house and so she was like, no, we're going to let it burn. But uh, eventually somebody made it upstairs. It was, you know, throwing water all over the upstairs, trying to get the fire out. And they opened up a door and they saw a, sl a female slave who had her bones broken and set to look like a crab. And they were like, what the fuck is this? And so they, you know, they went further into the house and they saw all kinds of just degradation and nastiness and the treatment of these slaves. And they said damn, you know, you can't even, you can't treat the niggas like this. You can beat them, you can rape them, you can kill them, but you can't experiment on them. And with that, she's fled New Orleans in the middle of the night and she went back to France. Now let's bring this up to modern times. A few years ago in Minneapolis, there was a black child in daycare who was lynched. I mean, the child survived another parent who was coming to pick up their child. They, um, found the child hanging there and they you know got the noose off their neck off of his neck and fled with him and the woman who did it she was this deranged looking white woman who said she was suicidal and suffering from mental illness and that she just had a very bad day and decided to hang a black child in the basement of a daycare now i am not a parent but i could just imagine how stressful the thought is having to entrust your child's well-being to somebody that that's supposed to take care of them that has to be terrifying and just imagine like you're sending your child off to be cared for while you work to provide for them and you find out that they're hanging from a noose in a basement because somebody had a bad day i would probably have to move my mom in or something to take care of my child while i work because i don't think i would be able to do that and get this the woman who hung this child didn't get any jail time. She got 10 years of probation and mandatory counseling. How in the fuck do you counsel out racism? She had the other white parents that uh, had children in her daycare write letters talking about how that was completely out of character for her and that she couldn't go to the hospital to treat her mental illness because her husband was so concerned about, you know, losing the daycare and the money that they would lose from it. But this child is just supposed to live with that because you had a mental breakdown, quote unquote. 
No, that child was vulnerable and alone in a system of white supremacy left with a racist who took advantage of him and planned it on treat, mistreating him due to the fact that he was not white. And that's another thing. Parents have got to stop leaving your children alone with these white people because, see, the ball is in their court. They can either be kind to your child or they can mistreat your child. And nine times out of ten, they are going to mistreat your child. All right, here's story time. When I was a teenager, I got moved to this little Peckerwood neighborhood. And I used to watch, you know, the, the younger kids play or whatever and there were these two young black children there and they would you know be riding bikes and shit with all the little cracker children and they would uh one of the cracker moms they would bring out like popsicles and they would give them to all the little white children who were riding bikes and shit and skating on scooters whatever the hell kids did back then but um the two little black kids never got anything. They had to go to their own house to get their popsicles and juice, you know? And that's just something that always stuck out to me. And even though I didn't understand it then, looking back on it, I knew it wasn't right, but now I can truly say what that was, and that was racism. No, they might not hang your child. They might not do anything uh, blatantly malicious, However, your child is not going to be treated the same way as those white children are treated. Now let's talk about what actually inspired this week's episode. There's a video circulating on the internet of a lone black child at a white sleepover being forced to drink urine. You heard me right. A little black boy is forced to drink urine by white people, white children at a sleepover. And these children couldn't be no older than 11 or 12, 13 at the most, but they're young. And don't get me started on, you know, they're too young to understand that was racism. They were pranking him, but they knew it was racism. They knew they were being racist to him because they kept calling him a nigger and saying things like cry nigger, ha ha ha, you know, white children are completely complicit in racism. And don't let anybody tell you different. By the time a white child is 12 years old, they understand that they are different from the rest of the world just per because they're white. As an adult who attended multiple sleepovers growing up, had sleepovers growing up, I can tell you it could get a little wild. But wasn't nobody trying to make nobody drink pee. But at the same time, we were black girls. So that wasn't the that was the furthest thing from our minds. Now, I've spent some time looking into this case, and it, apparently one of the little white boys befriended him, quote-unquote, and invited him to this sleepover where he knew that the other little white children would mistreat him. This happened in Plano, Texas, which realistically isn't that far from me. It's a few hours drive, but... um. The, the black child's mother called the police and the police are kind of dragging their feet like, oh, what do you want us to do? They're boys at a sleepover. Huh, huh, huh. But um, what they should be doing is charging those boys with bodily harm. If I was that boy's mother, I would slap a lawsuit on everybody's mother and father who was at of the children who was at that sleepover. Because mine is not to be messed with like that. And again, remember that you can't expect the police to do anything in a situation like that because the police are derived from slave catchers. Okay, so whatever happens to black people, we deserve it in their mind. It's not about helping us because the law is not made for black people. It's made to keep black people in order not to help us. And in no means am I saying that his mother is responsible for this, but a lot of times when black children get quote unquote befriended by a white child, the parent is so happy, like, oh Lord, my baby is finally accepted. But a lot of times it's not like that. They're befriending these children for clout, 
basically to say, look how cool I am. I'm hanging out with a black guy or they're befriending them to mistreat them. And when it comes to the girls, you know, when a white girl comes to try to be friends with a black girl, she's usually wanting to know how she could get involved with a black boy. That's what that's about. There, none of this shit is genuine, okay? I'm just going to put that out there, in my opinion. I could be wrong. I have been miseducated in the system of white supremacy. Now, let's take a look at another sleepover that happened. Um, a couple years ago, there was... Bless you, it's my dog. But um, there was a, a football team mom sleepover, and it was a lone black woman alone in a house with a bunch of white women and the black mother ends up dead and nobody knows what happened. The wives don't know what happened. The husbands don't know what happened. This woman's just dead. She's left behind two or three black children and a husband and nobody knows the thing and nobody has been hit with any kind of charges or anything. When you are alone with white people, you are in danger. Point blank, period. There's many other examples I can give of this, but I'm going to give one more. Um, year before last, at a New Year's Eve party, there was a black girl there with her white fiancé, and she ends up dead at the bottom of a pool. And again, nobody knows what happened. Nobody has been hit with any kind of charge or anything. She's just, you know, dead at the bottom of a pool. Well, you know, niggas can't swim. Our bones are too heavy, quote unquote. Please note I'm being facetious, but um, these black people keep putting themselves in these positions where they think they're accepted and that they are truly friends and confidants with these white people and they're ending up dead. Nobody seems to be learning a lesson about this. And with that, I just say, you know, practice situational awareness, even if you don't know this black person or something like that, there's a level of trust that comes with being black people together surrounded by white people because we understand that we are under a microscope everything we do is looked at and can be perceived as a threat so you know when you're in these spaces with white people you have to really be on your p's and q's and you know until your child is at a point where they can defend themselves against this these beasts you have to understand that they don't need to be alone with them at all. Now, I want to talk about a few years ago when the protest mo movement was in its infancy. There was a photo of a child and he was dressed like an extra in good times. He had on like these plaid pants and a leather jacket and this little hat and he was crying these tears holding up a sign that said free hugs for officers or something close to that. And admittedly, a lot of black people were outraged over that as they should have been because, you know, we're fighting this war against police brutality. And you see this young child being groomed to, you know, love police officers and hug on them and all that stuff. And it was, it was sickening. And the boy's name was Devante Hart. And they put this child on Good Morning America and all those other shows. And we learned that the boy was being raised by these two white lesbians. And I'm not saying anything against that. I believe that a family is something that we are all entitled to have doesn't matter who you love or anything like that everybody on this planet is entitled to have a family no matter how they get it or how they form it however Devante Hart's two mothers were white supremacist they had a bunch of black children that were pretty much kept under the stairs that they only paraded around to uh, gay pride events and to racial unjust protests to show what the world quote unquote could look like if we all quote unquote loved each other and all that other bullshit that they spew. We later find out that these children were about to be taken from them because the mothers were under investigation by CPS because the children are going to school with bruises, uh, they're being starved, 
and just called nigger and all kinds of bad things and they couldn't defend themselves. It was so bad that the children were asking the neighbors if they could leave some food in the mailbox so that they could eat something when they when they were getting the mail to uh, bring into the house that they could have something in their pocket to eat because they weren't feeding these children. And when the jig was up and the police were uh, closing in on them, what these two women did was they drove to the Pacific Northwest, got drunk and drove the family vehicle over a cliff and two or three of those children still have not been found. Those children were vulnerable and left with two demons who used their whiteness to run a plantation in modern, modern time. And they took the coward's way out by committing suicide and murder simultaneously. Not only is this a very sad story, it's also a cautionary tale of the dangers that children face with being left with white supremacists. And I think we could all learn from this, the fact that black children are the most vulnerable in our society. I'm going to end it on that note. Hopefully you guys will think about it a little bit. Um, if you have anything you want to say to me, you can hit me up on email at lookintoitpod21 at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Instagram at the real look into it pod. And also in the words of our brother, Neely Fuller Jr. If you do not understand white supremacy, everything else you see will only confuse you later days, guys.